Hey everybody, I'm here today to talk to you about eight things to look for when buying a used car. There are many inspections that you can do or have done to a used car to see if it's a good purchase or not. But these are eight simple things that you can look for within a used car to inform you and educate you and prepare you for purchasing that used car. Now let's get right to it. The first thing to look for when buying a used car is exterior damage or repair. Now what I would recommend is do a, an in-depth inspection of the exterior of the car. What you want to do is you want to walk around the car, look at it from many different angles, and what you're looking for is maybe body panels that are miscolored, so they're they're slightly off from the color of the rest of the car. You're looking for paint chips, you're looking for rust, you're looking for any spots that look like they might have been repaired, and you're really looking down the angles of the car to see if you see any waves, because a car, if no damage has been done to it, no significant damage has been done to it, should be fairly straight and smooth. If you see a lot of waves that look like they shouldn't be there, it could be a sign of body work that was done. Number two, the second thing to look for is interior damage or repair. What you want to do is look through the interior of the car. And the interior of the car is filled with different crevices and nooks and crannies. So you should look through all of the areas of the interior of the car. Now you should be looking at the fabric, at the panels, at the buttons and so forth. And you're basically looking for things like water damage tears in the fabric or any of the materials that are in the car, miscolored panels, panels or buttons or parts of the car that look like they have been placed on there and, and they're, they're slightly off, meaning maybe the panel came off and they just glued it into place or snapped it back into place. Anything that doesn't look like it lines up properly, anything that looks warped or wavy, you should look into that. All right, number three, let's move on. You should be looking for any possible leaks. Now this is both in the car with regards to water leaking in the car or a leak from the engine bay. Now we should do what you should do is look at the engine bay, in the engine bay, and below the engine bay and underneath the car while the engine is off and the engine is on. And look for any leaks. And if there is a leak, what you want to do is you want to find out what it is that's leaking. Because it could very well be something minor that's really easy and inexpensive to repair, or it could be a major leak that will be a complete game changer for whether or not you're gonna buy this used car. Number four, dashboard lights. Now it's normal for some dashboard lights to be on, like right now my seatbelt light is on because I'm pulled over and I don't have my seatbelt on, and the parking brake light is on because I have my parking brake on and engaged. But there are other lights that shouldn't be there unless you know about them. It's things like a check engine light, Things like the airbag light, various lights, the oil level light or the oil pressure light, the oil light. There are certain lights that if they're on the dashboard and illuminated, they're sort of like warning signs. And it's not to say that you can't buy the car, but you need to look into those lights because you have to figure out what's causing them to illuminate. It might be a simple error, like uh, like a reading error that's causing the light to illuminate for no reason, or it could be something more serious, like the car needs a serious engine component or transmission component. So with that being said, look for the dashboard lights, okay? Make sure that they all work and then see if any are illuminated once the engine has been started and you're driving the car and so forth. Number five is the odometer. So you wanna look for two things on the odometer. First and foremost, look at the kilometers or miles on the odometer and see if it matches what the person is telling you. If the person is telling you it is 100,000 kilometers and you see 140,000 kilometers, there's a big error right there. So look to see if it, if it matches up with what the seller is telling you. And also you wanna look at whether or not it makes sense. If the person, if the odometer says 100,000 kilometers, but the car looks like, you know, it's been through 250,000 kilometers, then there's a problem there because maybe there's a problem with the odometer or maybe it was, you know, maybe they, they messed around with it. So with that being said, check out the odometer, make sure it matches up with what the person is telling you, and also make sure that it just makes sense compared to the rest of the car. Number six, the sixth thing that you should look for when buying a used car is any warning signs during the test drive. So first and foremost, if you're not allowed to take the car for a test drive, I would recommend not buying it, okay? There's no reason why you can't take the car for a test drive or 
or have the owner test drive the car with you in it, okay? Sometimes owners are hesitant to let people test drive their cars if, you know, it's a special limited edition car or very expensive car, and that's completely understandable, but make the owner test drive the car with you inside of it, okay? And while you're on the test drive, you want to look, listen, and feel for any warning signs. So just look around the car, anything that lights up, anything that shakes that's not supposed to shake. Feel. Does it feel weird? Does it does it feel awkward? Does it feel like something's wrong? Listen. Does it sound like something's wrong? Do you hear any squeaks or squeals or rattles that aren't supposed to be there? So any warning signs during the test drive, that's what you should look for. Number seven. Number seven is look for the paperwork or the receipts. If the owner's telling you that the engine has been rebuilt and the new engine, the rebuilt engine only has 15,000 kilometers on it, but there's no paperwork or receipts to back that up. I'm not saying that they're lying, but definitely look into it a little bit further. Have it inspected by a mechanic who can tell you, yes, it has been rebuilt or no, it has not been rebuilt. You know, the owner should theoretically keep all of the receipts for when they sell their car but if they don't have all of the oil change receipts and the engine looks like it's in mint condition it's completely understandable but anything major that has been done to a car things like a new clutch a new transmission a new rebuilt engine things like that definitely look for the paperwork or the receipts for the car and also look for the legal paperwork for actually buying the car from the owner the ownership and everything else that you need last but not least number eight the eighth thing to look for when buying a used car is what I like to call DIY disasters, do-it-yourself disasters. Now, I'm a do-it-yourselfer. This whole channel started on the concept of doing it yourself, and I love doing things myself, things to my home, things to my car, and so forth. But with that being said, with that being said, if a DIY job is a disaster, then it's actually going to hinder the car as opposed to make it better. If the panels that the person fixed are all warped and all sorts of, you know, all misshaped and so forth, then obviously that's what I like to call DIY disaster. If the person wired up a new stereo system and it sounds great, but the wiring is all over the place, hanging out everywhere, you know, it's just a DIY disaster. Keep your eyes out for that. Now, with all of these things being said, with all of these eight things in mind it's not that if you see a few of these little warning signs then all of a sudden you can't buy the car it just means that I want you to know what you're getting into your car can have a huge massive dent on it and you can still buy it because it might still be a great car and it might not cost that much to fix or you might be getting a good discount on the price of the car to fix that error or that problem but the thing is I just don't want you to be surprised I want you to know exactly what you're getting into that's the goal with these eight things to look for when buying a used car if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Let me know what you think down below as a comment. What are some other things to look for when buying a used car? Let me know as a comment down below. And of course, be sure to subscribe for more great car and driving videos just like this one. And that's all I have for you today. Thanks for watching.